Hello and welcome to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In this video we're going to learn about how to get your theme ready for Gutenberg which means adding all the editor styles to add support for the Gutenberg in the front end as well as in the editor. Okay, so, so let's begin then. So in the previous videos we have learned about adding the theme supports. So if you remember we had been using the after setup theme hook and then we are using the setup theme function inside of the class Aquila theme and this function adds support for the theme for different things like title tag, custom logo and things like that. Let's come back to our editor style. So we use this function to link our custom file to the Dynamize editor in the post edit screen. We also uh, use the add theme support for WP block styles and then we also use the al align wide for wide or full alignment options for images right so and we also use the add theme support for align wide support right like wide or full now when we create the Gutenberg blocks when the user creates them in the editor we would expect the user to see the same kind of style in the editor as well as in the front end so for that we can add our own custom style sheet okay and now what we're going to do is we'll just take this add editor style function and I'm going to just put that below this okay and then so this is the one responsible for telling us the path up until our style sheet okay so let's say that we create a file called okay so we go to our server our SAS directory and we'll create a file called editor.scss and then we're just going to import it inside of our JavaScript file and we'll inside of the file that we're going to create and we'll call it editor.js okay and then import sas and then editor.scss what this is going to do is this is going to go ahead and uh, import the scss file and then of course the webpack is going to use the sas loader to convert it into javascript and then we're using the mini css extract plugin then we're using the extract plugin to extract css out of it and then put that inside of the CSS directories. Of course we don't have anything inside of the have anything over here so let's just say editor styles and save it. Uh, let's go back and check and then we also need to tell webpack by going in over here and we're going to tell webpack in the entry that make sure that when you get a file called editor then take that entry point as editor and then go ahead and put that inside of the build directory okay so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and run so I'm going to start the webpack now and inside of the editor.css we're just adding a comment and nothing else so let's let it bundle it so here you go it's bundled and now you can see that you've got the editor.css file over here right Awesome. So currently it doesn't have anything, but eventually we'll add it. So all we have to do is just give a path up until here. Okay. So inside of the add editor style, what we need to do is we need to add the path for this. So what is the path? It's assets and then build and CSS and then editor.css. And that's what we've done over here. Okay. So what this does is, so what this is asking for, it's asking for the path so like add the path to our custom editor style and you can change it you can change this path according to your needs okay uh, so let's see editor.css okay awesome so by default it links the editor-style.css but if we specify a path which in our case I have used the editor.css it's going to use that instead okay uh, so if you wouldn't have a specified a path then it would, it would use the editor-style.css and you can see that okay 
Awesome. So since we now have it, uh, all I have to do is just add some styles to it. So what I'm going to do is I'll go on. So I'll go on to my theme and please do start my repository if you like my work and I'm going to go to assets source SAS and I'm also going to create a directory called editor over here so I'm going to close the build and I'm going to create a directory and I'll number it 5 and it will be editor and inside of this I'm going to create a file called editor.scss okay and then I'm going to come in over here and inside of the inside of the generic I have elements so I'm just going to copy the elements because I don't want to type it again and then I'll explain it to you what has changed so I'm going to go to generic and I'm going to go to elements and then just paste it here so let me explain to you what's happening so these are of course the basic styles but if you notice over here I have added WP block code because that is the default default style for the block code in the editor so let's go to the editor I'm going to go to posts add new and then I'm going to add the block code so you have block code and then if you do an inspect element you can see that it has a class called WP block code so I'm just addressing that class I'm ensuring that this class actually has you know these styles that are available right so that's what I'm doing over here okay and then I'm also going to make sure that I'm going to import all of the required files into that so what I'm going to do is I'll come back and then I'll go to SAS and then editor dot editor file and then editor dot CSS which is this and I'm just going to copy this from here and then I'm going to put that inside of the editor dot CSS okay so we have the elements we have the buttons we have the editor color classes okay so uh, currently it doesn't have any editor color classes but we are going to add that later okay great and after doing this I'm going to ensure that I import my editor editor file that I've just created so this one I'm importing this one into this file okay so if you take a look so you have this file so this is the file that I'm importing inside of the editor.scss okay and now if I just check the bundle yep it's bundling everything which is great it's also including the font family and everything that's nice okay so I'm gonna go back and refresh in to my editor to ensure that it's been added so let's take a look there you go so now you can see if I click on the WP block code you have this quotes added over here so now you can see that all of the style by are being added so border left font style all of these are styles that have been applied by us right and these are all coming from the style sheet which is this right here so it actually adds those styles in a style tag right so it's automatically putting that so because we added the theme support and we used a function called add editor style this is actually including these editor styles over here okay so that is being included using a style tag so these are all of the styles that we have added over here this is awesome okay and even if you take a look at the front end then I should expect that I should get the styles on the front end as well so take a look at the preview preview new tab and now you can see that the same styles are being applied in the front end as well because we are actually including our styles uh, the element style in in the front end as well inside of the main.css so the main.css has got the generic and the generic has actually got the elements and elements is the one 
uh, that we are currently dealing with where we have this WP block code defined. Similarly, uh, we have WP block code citation and we're just adding all of these classes for that. Even there is a class for WP pull code. So if you take a look, there's a pull code available. If I get rid of this block, oops, like if I delete this block, you have the pull code available. So then again, this also has a class like WP pull code. I don't know if you can see, let me zoom in. So WP pull code, and that's the style that we are adding. You can see border none, padding zero, that's automatically being added. Yeah, we are adding style for block code, for align left, align right. We have for image, and then for image support, we have the WP block image. So if I remove this block, and if I just add the image block, you'll notice that the image block has that class. Okay, so if you add an image, let's say this one, select, right? WP block image, there you go. So if you click on that, you can see that this is the class WP block image that uh, is already here. And that's where we are applying our styles, medium with auto, all of that stuff, right? Okay, awesome. Uh, then we have the fig. So these are all normal elements. These are all normal. Let's continue further. Yep, then you have buttons. So even the buttons have some classes. So take a look, button. And uh, let's add one button like hello. So you can see that it says WP block buttons, right? So you have WP block buttons, which is this, and then you have this uh, class as well. So let's search for it. So there you go. You can see that this is the class WP block button link. And these are our, our style that is being applied like border radius zero, font weight, font size, line height, padding, all of that stuff. And on the hover, you can see that it goes look kind of uh, gray. Um, so again, I think, uh, you know, you can change the color you want, but just letting you know. Then you have your form fields. Let's keep going, keep going. Then you have the WP block separator. So you have this separator. And uh, let's search for block separator. There you go. So you can see HR, right? This is the block separator and these are the other styles that we are actually applying on the separator and HR. Okay, so so basically these are all the classes that I have added over here. To and these styles that you see over here uh, in the editor.scs, all of this, the buttons, the editor color, editor color classes, essentials, all of these, all are being applied into the into the editor okay brilliant so we'll continue further uh, there's a lot more thing that you can do in the editor for example you can add your custom classes also in the editor but I will probably explain that to you uh, in the next upcoming videos one of the things that we're going to discuss next is going to be block patterns because I feel that you know this is really really nice that WordPress has come up with uh, you know, you can add these patterns and you don't really need much technical knowledge in order for you to create these patterns. So these are the default ones, but you can add your own as well. Okay, awesome. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And I'm going to see you in the next video. And uh, please uh, ensure that you give star to my repository uh, to support my work. And also follow me on GitHub. And if you do like my work, uh, you can also nominate me on stars.github.com. Okay, awesome. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.